Hi guys, I want to show you one pawn end game that uh, once in my life it took me quite some time to solve it and I could never imagine that with two pawns on the board, come on, how hard could it be? It should be like seconds or minutes and yet I spent dozens of minutes solving this one. I hope you will enjoy together with me discovering this, uh, this sort of position uh, which is quite interesting and uh, instructive i believe because there are many motifs that you can learn that are useful not only in pawn end games but in general so it's white to move and win i suggest that you try to just set it on the board and solve it on your own if you can then from this position if not try to move the pieces around so i was trying to solve from this one and i struggled quite some time even though it seems like come on that must be very easy, right? It's just pawns going quickly and that's it. So let's see what I think the thinking mechanism should be in this position. The first thing one should consider here is just let me go with the pawn, let me rush to the corner. There are two problems with this one. First, black's king is in the square of a pawn, so this way you learn the concept of a square, right? So not learn, but remind yourself that king can catch up with the pawn but that is not the only problem in this position a4 c5 actually also draws a5 c4 a6 c3 a7 c2 a8 queen check and you might think oh well that's it i am winning but king e2 and uh, hopefully you know that the c2 pawn versus queen i if the king is so far away it is a draw there's no way white can uh, white can win this position so just king is coming to d2 and there are stalemate ideas i would briefly quickly show what i have in mind let's say king e2 queen c3 king d1 queen d3 king c1 king is approaching king b2 and again white can give checks approach the pawn Pawn is coming, you give a check, king a1, pawn is coming, if you take it, it's a stalemate. Hopefully you know this, this trick. So one funny thing is that, let's say I'm using stockfish 8, it gives plus 5. So whenever you see a plus 5 or more evaluation in a pawn endgame, it doesn't necessarily mean it is winning. It could be, the final position could be something like this, and the engine says, oh my god, it's plus 5. But in fact, it is a draw. There's some sort of a bug in the in the algorithm. Uh, my engine is not connected to the um, to the Nalimov table base. Well, Stockfish Nine is doing much better. It's giving uh, plus one. Hopefully, you would read. Ah, okay. But if I give eight cores, it starts giving plus five again. So there's a bug in a, in an engine. So if you see huge evaluation in pawn endgame, don't get too excited. It might lead to a drawn position like this. All right, so let's come back to original position. Um, well, you can stop just seeing that the king is in the square and that's enough. This c5 uh, was just to, to illustrate this well-known position. So, what else can white do? What can white do is white can improve the king and use an, an, another principle, shouldering. King f5 is shouldering the king from going to the corner in a way, usually shouldering is used in uh, different ways, but that's the way to go. And now if, uh, if black tries to approach with the king, approach with the king, trying to stop the pawn with king, king d5, king approaches, king c5, and suddenly this, uh, this pawn is unstoppable and that pawn cannot go. This king is very restricted and shouldering worked. White is winning. Let's see what else can black do. King f5. Clearly the best move in the position. So if black goes c5, we go king e5 and we can stop the pawn ourselves. c4, king d4, c3, king here. And if king goes to the corner, we use the shouldering again and white is winning. So king e3 also falls into king d5. So And the king is actually doing two jobs, stopping the passed pawn and preventing the king from going to the corner. White is winning here. So you may think, oh, okay, king f5 is just winning. Um, uh, I don't let him go to the a8 and I stop his c pawn. But 
luckily after quite some time you can see an idea for black the best move for black is king e3 king e5 and now surprising illogical move c6 c6 exclamation mark what's the idea of c6 normally you would want to play c5 but the problem is king d5 wins the pawn and keeps the king away from the corner white is winning but black can spend the tempo on c6 white cannot go take this pawn because king d4 king c6 king c4 and king is just eating that pawn so but it seems like but white goes a4 and white is black still cannot go c5 because of king d5 but black goes king d3 threatening to catch up with the pawn so white has to go a5 and now black goes with the c pawn a6 c4 a7 c3 a8 queen and c2 and you shouldn't stop here for white oh i promoted the pawn the king is misplaced no if the king was on b2 that would be an immediate draw right so uh, because white's king is not close enough so and this position when i was calculating this line was there were so many moves to consider you have queen a1 you have queen a3 you have queen h1 you can just you should analyze queen e4 check queen d5 checks there are many moves to consider uh, but all of them except one lead to a draw so let's see what is the reason so um the king should be here right if the king is on this side we can try um approaching with the queen so let's see let's let's say i go queen e4 check king d2 i go let's say queen d4 check king goes to c1 and the problem is white's king cannot cannot approach here if king a1 king d2 and you might see hopefully you would see the idea of queen a2 pinning the pawn if black goes king d1 this, this is, is a beautiful, beautiful idea. idea usually, usually it is, is used from the other, other round, round of the pawn on c2 but, but here the brilliant move king d4 is winning, winning because after c1 queen king d3 this is a beautiful winning position for white hopefully you know this one if this king jumps to b1 that king jumps to b3 and white's queen is on e2 this is quite quite well known position where black cannot hold the mate and there is no check but i never seen this one from the other side before i studied this position the, the queen, queen cannot, cannot give check, check to the king, the king right all the ch all, all the checks are all the squares are taken and white is going to checkmate on the next move here or someplace else, else depending where the queen goes and, and white is winning so, so hopefully you can you can get excited oh, okay i just uh, let's say you can just go immediately queen a1 here threatening queen c1 king d2 and go queen a2 and think oh that is winning but then if you think hard enough you would see that king c3 is an option removing the threat and that's it white has to move the queen and king comes back to d2 queen a3 king d2 and uh, white cannot make progress if white goes queen b2 now it's king d1 and white is not in time because c1 comes with a tempo c1 queen comes with a tempo black doesn't have time to approach with the king so this position took me quite some time to realize that what can i do here what can i do it would be great if the queen could jump to this diagonal that would be immediate win because some next move white is just going to c1 with the queen and that would be it um, unfortunately geometry doesn't uh, <laughs> allow this one. the border was if the board would be bigger i would go to g h h i j i would go to j8 if you draw the arrow further behind the board j8 that would be winning and coming back to c1 but that's obviously a joke right so what can white do and the only move that is winning here is queen d5 check and what i like about it is that the three winning ways black has three legal moves here win lose in different in different manner and this that's why i find it so instructive and useful so let's see king c3 what happens after king c3 it is quite typical a way to win this it's to go queen d4 check king b3 only move and queen a1 this is the way by the way you handle if that pawn was on c3 and let's say king was on h7 the best way for white to win against the c3 pawn is to put the queen on this diagonal i'm not gonna remove uh, 
um, pieces for that. Hopefully you can imagine that. If the pawn is on c3, the easiest way to stop it, you put the queen on long diagonal and uh, at the moment black plays c2, you go to a1 and that's it. And that is the easy way to win that position. So um, this way you learn that queen a1 against this one wins. All right, but black has two other moves. King e3 is another move that deserves attention. And now again, beautiful only win for white here. I encourage you to find it. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. Only move that is winning here uses the fact that there's alignment on this diagonal. Now queen g2 exclamation mark. It's very unusual. You're like saying go promote. You're like pushing that pawn for promotion. And if pawn promotes, queen g5, skewer winning the queen. If king d3, Again, the move that is winning is queen g5 and queen goes to c1. Game is over. Only queen g2 is winning here. Everything else leads to a draw. And last but not the least, it's king e2. And the best move in this position. And again, the only way to win this one is if you bear in mind that when we played queen a2 with the king on d2, king c3 was leading to a draw. But now it's not the case. Now we go queen a2, another only move that is winning. Queen a2, if black goes king d1, what else, right? King d3 doesn't make much sense. Now king d4, c1 queen, and king to d3 with mate in a couple of moves. That's it. That's the only way to win here is by going through d5 and three different ways to win this position. I find I found it very beautiful and surprisingly difficult for just two pawn endgame. Come on, what one pawn endgame they teach you when you're a kid, right? But two pawns, come on, how hard could it be? It could be ridiculously hard. Queen a2, just for the record, king d2, king d4, the pawn is pinned. King d3, the easiest way is to approach with the queen. The only move is king d2 and now king approaches king d1 and king d3. <laughs> Ironically queen a2 would also win transposing to the line but clearly king d3 is better. So and that is it. That is how you win this position with these are the only moves that you can win this position with. You learn or remind yourself the rule of a square, the fact that queen versus c2 pawn for black or f2 pawn for that matter in most cases is a draw you uh, learn and remind yourself a shouldering principle and and then when it comes to queen versus uh, the c2 pawn there are lots of things that you can learn specifically this idea with queen a2 surprising strong and beautiful i hope you enjoy subscribe to my channel and i'll see you i think in a week take care